A lot of news outlets are jumping on this new study that shows there are plasticizers in fast food. I'll show you this article real fast in USA Today, and then I'm going to move on to the big picture here because it's funny to me, actually, that the focus is on fast food, which, uh, okay, who really thinks fast food is healthy? Is there anybody left in the back of the room that thinks fast food is healthy for you? This stuff is everywhere, and when I was an environmental reporter, I saw firsthand, because I interviewed these scientists, scientists who were very concerned about aquatic species, specifically fish, male fish, who are producing egg yolk protein because of the amount of estrogenic chemicals in the water, phthalates being one of them. But let's read this first, okay? Phthalates on the fast food menu, chemicals linked to health problems found in McDonald's, Taco Bell, this research that was published in the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology, found that over 80% of the foods that they studied, coming from McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut, Domino's, Taco Bell, and Chipotle, contained a phthalate called DNBP, and that 70% contained the phthalate DEHP. Both of the chemicals have been linked to reproductive health problems. And one of the authors said that it's concerning to find these chemicals detected in the foods that we ingest. Now, phthalates can end up in foods any number of ways. One of the ways that they cite here is through the packaging. But phthalates are everywhere. Phthalates are one of the reasons that I entirely overhauled the makeup that I used. But they're everywhere. You can find them in lotions and in soaps. So it's always funny to me when we point out that McDonald's or Burger King is unhealthy because they have plasticizers in the food when it's basically in everything that we touch and consume. Not everything, but a lot of the conventional products that are out there have phthalates in them, which is why you have to be really careful about what you're putting on your body and putting in your body. And it's not often discussed in mainstream news, mostly because, well, hey, I was one of the only full-time environmental reporters for a TV station in the entire country. And so a lot of people don't know about this stuff. I don't know if you remember this skit back when Stephen Colbert was actually funny, but he is talking to Sammy the Salmon, and the salmon came from Puget Sound, where I used to be a reporter where I did my environmental reporting. One of the big studies that came out while I was in Seattle was about how there were drugs like Prozac in the water, cocaine, all kinds of big name, big label drugs that they were finding in these salmon. But it's funny, when I went to interview one of the scientists about this, she told me that they were very concerned about endocrine disrupting drugs in the water. This particular scientist said that while the cocaine in your fish or Prozac in your fish may be the sexy headline, just like plasticizers in your McDonald's, that she and others were far more concerned about these estrogenic compounds that are in the water and how they're affecting wildlife, especially like threatened salmon species. Just to show you that I'm not the only one who was talking about this, this comes from National Geographic. Why are these male fish growing eggs? And that's exactly what we were learning about in Puget Sound, that these estrogenic compounds coming from our detergents, coming from other things that we flush down the toilet or that go down our drains and our soaps, uh, stuff that we are putting on our bodies, lotions, makeups, all kinds of things were then going basically through the wastewater treatment plants, completely unaffected, and then ending up in the water. And then if they're fish that are hanging around the wastewater treatment plants, they're being affected by these and seem to be very affected by these endocrine disrupting chemicals. So this graph right here says fish in wildlife refuges are feminized, probably by hormone skewing pollution. What does this pretend for the health of all creatures and people? So if you scroll down here, they say scientists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the U.S. Geological Survey studied fish in 19 national wildlife refuges in the U.S. Northeast, including Mrs. Quoi, if I'm saying that right. Their conclusion, an astonishing 60 to 100 percent of all the male smallmouth bass they examined had female egg cells growing in their testes. Scientists called this condition intersex. And while its exact causes are unknown, it's been linked to man-made environmental chemicals that mimic or block sex hormones. Now, 
they go on to talk about how this is different from fish who are uh, uh, basically hermaphrodites. So they, they talk about it right here. Gender in fish isn't always straightforward that some are hermaphrodites, meaning they naturally have both male and female sex organs. And they're born with the ability to change their gender, but that's different than intersex. Uh, this happens in species of fish that aren't hermaphroditic, and it doesn't help reproduction. In severe cases, it can make fish sterile. And that was something that the scientists that I talked to were definitely concerned about, especially if you're dealing with a species like threatened salmon, and they're already facing some significant issues. And then on top of it, they're not reproducing like they should because the male salmon are producing egg yolk protein. And so again, like the scientist said, the headlines even around that uh, particular topic of chemicals in the water were focusing on Prozac and cocaine because it makes for funny Stephen Colbert sketches and clickable headlines. But what they were really the most concerned about, you told me, were these often not talked about estrogenic compounds in the water. And, you know, it's funny, I never really came across anything in my environmental reporting career that was the opposite, like the testosteronic. I don't know what you would call that, but the opposite of estrogenic. I, I didn't find that. Maybe that exists, but I didn't I didn't see that. Often the chemicals that I was witness to, their effects in, in talking to these scientists had estrogenic effects. Why? Not totally sure. But again, to go back to these headlines of, of uh, chemicals that affect your reproductive system, your endocrine system, the the headlines that are like there's plastic in your McDonald's. Uh, okay, well I don't know. Maybe there are, is somebody watching that thought McDonald's is good for you. Please let me know in the comment section if you did, and I spoil this for you. Also, I got to tell you, Santa may not be real. I hate to be the buzzkill on this one, but when we see these headlines, it might be easy to be like, oh well, I don't eat McDonald's, so I'm totally fine. And the reason why I want to do this video is because again, former mainstream news reporter, also specialized in the environment. Uh, if it's in McDonald's, that doesn't mean it ain't also in some other uh, healthier version of fast food or in that lotion that you think is good for you or even in stuff that's organic, you can find it there. And so it's a word to the wise. You have to be really vigilant as a consumer that you were staying away from this stuff because yeah, if you just were exposed to it one time, maybe it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And granted, I'm sure not a biology expert, but I'm sure it takes more phthalates to affect a human than to have egg yolk protein produced, if that's even a thing, in human beings. But if you think about it over time, that was that was really one of the pieces of awareness I gained in my job, which I am glad for, is that we often don't think about impact over time. So if it's allowed to be in my cereal or in my makeup at the grocery store, at the drugstore, then it must be okay. Well, maybe it would be okay in the dose you're getting that one time. But if you're using it five times a day or two or three times a day, and then you're using it for 10 or 20 years, what's its effect, especially as it builds up in, in uh, connection with other stuff that you're consuming. And and really that you realize that, that, that you are affected by levels of, of chemicals that, that are safe at a certain dose, but not necessarily as many times as you're using it over as many years as you're using it. And so just word to the wise, I, I chose to talk about this because like I said, it's, it's easy to walk away and say, well, I don't eat that crap, so I'm totally fine. Phthalates are everywhere and uh, often the stuff that's affecting us is not making it in uh, in some of these uh, articles that pick up on the headlines that are flashy and scare us uh, because maybe your detergent is potentially affecting salmon reproduction in Puget Sound and also could have an effect on you is perhaps not as exciting as there's plastics in your Happy Meal, but it's nonetheless a valid point to consider. So that's why I decided to share that today. Don't forget you can support my work by also checking out my sponsors and having a glass of wine or a cup of coffee in honor of free speech. 
versus allisonwinepromo.com. Allison with one L, winepromo.com. You get 50% off of my favorite Argentinian Malbecs and 50% off of shipping. They have switched out the three bottles from the last pairing, so check them out. Many of these are high-altitude wines. They're very robust. They use no flavoring, no filtering, no dyes, and no excess chemicals. But if you need something to wake you up, like a strong cup of coffee, check out twinenginecoffee.com slash Allison, twinenginecoffee.com slash Allison. They've got a wide variety of roasts. These are high altitude, shade grown Nicaraguan coffees that are also USDA certified organic. They also do a lot of great work to help prevent sea turtle nests from being poached. You can support their work by also going to twinenginecoffee.com slash Allison and become a sponsor and They'll even show you video of when the sea turtle nests that they're protecting are hatched. So check out my sponsors and support free speech wherever you are. 